I finally come out here today to plead with you to consider your soul. Your soul matters, friend. Your soul is precious. And your soul will spend eternity in either in one of two places, heaven or hell. Your soul will either be in heaven or hell upon the moment that you die, upon the moment that you leave this world. The Bible says that today is the day of salvation. Now is the accepted time, saith the Lord. I understand that right now many people are preparing for the storm. They're preparing for the, the storm Eon, Hurricane Eon, and that's, that's a good thing. It's good to make proper preparation. I'm all for proper preparation, definitely. I've been through some of the, I've been at some of the stores already, and I see that all, most of the water is already sold out. Most of the bottled water. But I and I know that people are preparing because they know what's coming ahead. They know what's what's just on the, just within days away, right? The storm that's right in our path, heading for our city, heading for right, right for our location. And that's good. It's wise to prepare. It's, it's a wise thing to make preparation, folks. But it's amazing how very few people ever make preparation for the afterlife. How very few people ever make preparation for eternity. It's really a sad reality. It's really sad. Because the Bible teaches that those who are not in Christ Jesus... Those who are not in Jesus Christ, they're not prepared for eternity. There's another storm coming, my friend. There is another storm coming, and it's called the storm of God's wrath. It's called the storm of God's wrath. The Word of God says, the blessed King James Bible says in John 3, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. He that believeth on Him, referring to Jesus Christ, is not condemned. But he that believeth not, he is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. So the Bible makes it very clear, if you're not in Jesus Christ, if you have not received Jesus Christ, as your personal Savior, my friend, you're in danger. You're in danger. Because right now, God's holy wrath, His anger, His holy anger, indignation and wrath, right now God's wrath abides upon you, friend. And that's presently. It abides upon you right now. If you're not in Jesus Christ, if you have not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, friend, you're in danger. You're in trouble with God. You're in trouble, friend. I thank God I got saved back in 2011. I thank God for the day that God saved me. I don't have to worry about God's wrath anymore. Because I've been, I've been spared. I've been delivered. I've been saved. I've been rescued. I've been redeemed by the precious blood of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I've been redeemed by the Lamb of God, by the very blood of the Lamb of God. For it was that very blood, the very blood of God, it was God's very blood that purchased my salvation, that purchased my redemption. It was Jesus Christ, His precious blood, that purchased my very redemption. And who also purchased your redemption. I leave you with a question. Will you accept Christ Jesus? Will you receive Jesus Christ as your personal Savior? Will you flee from the wrath to come? Will you flee from God's wrath and flee to Jesus Christ 
the Lord and Savior, the Savior of the world. Like I mentioned already, we're all, we're all preparing and planning for the storm that's to come. We're all planning ahead and we're all preparing for the storm that's right ahead of us. That's not too far away, that's coming our way. We know it's coming, we know that the storm is coming. And we have prepared. We got our water, we got our, our food supplies. And yet many of you today, you have not prepared for eternity. Many of you today have not prepared for the eternal storm that's coming. Many of you today have not prepared for the day when you will die, for the day when you will take your last breath, for the very day when you will wake up for the very last time. For the very day when you will draw your last breath. You have not prepared for that day, friend. God wants to be your refuge. God wants to be your tower. He wants to be your safety. Yes, God does want to be your, re your, re your refuge and your redemption. But He cannot be your refuge unless you come to Christ. Unless you come and receive His Son by faith and by faith alone. Jesus Christ made it very clear in the Gospel of John that He is the way, the truth, and the life. And that no man cometh unto the Father but by Him. And if you try to go up to any other way, if you try to work for your salvation, if you try to earn your salvation, if you try to go up some other way, that's not Jesus Christ, my friend. Jesus Christ Himself calls you a thief and a robber. If you're trying to obtain salvation in any other way, you're a thief, my friend. You're a thief and a robber. Those are the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. You cannot be saved without the Lord Jesus Christ. My friend, there is no other way. There is no other way of salvation. But there is none other name. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Only the name of the Lord Jesus Christ has the power to save. There's no power in Buddha. There's no power in Krishna. There's no power in Allah. Oh no, friend. There's no power in Babaji. But there's power in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that name is salvation. And that name is found redemption. Eternal redemption. You can be saved, my friend, today. If you'll believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ. If you'll believe upon His name. If you'll place your faith and trust solely in the Lord Jesus Christ. Trusting solely in His finished work that He accomplished for you at the cross of Calvary, when He shed His blood for your sins, when He hung in your place, when He paid the penalty for your sins. You can receive forgiveness. You can receive mercy, friend, at the foot of the cross. At the foot of the cross, you can receive God's mercy. You can receive God's grace. You can receive God's marvelous, wonderful redemption. Will you accept Jesus Christ? Will you believe upon the name, the marvelous name of the Lord Jesus Christ? I plead with you today, folks. I plead with you to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept His sacrifice. Accept the payment that He made on the cross 
for your sins, accept it by faith, and by faith alone. Accept the payment that Jesus Christ made for your sins. If you do not accept that payment, friend, you will go to hell. When you die, you will go to hell if you have not believed upon the name of Jesus Christ. I don't want you to go to hell. God does not want to send you to hell. God loves you. He cares about you. But if you reject His salvation, He will send you to hell. He will send you to hell. And the Bible warns, Jesus Christ warns, that hell is a place of weeping, a place of wailing, a place of gnashing of teeth. Jesus Christ warned about hell, a place of damnation, a place of eternal misery, a place of no hope, a place where you will suffer and experience God's wrath forever. You see, my friend, that's the storm that you need to prepare for. And if you have not believed in the gospel of Christ, if you have not accepted the payment that the Lord Jesus Christ made on the cross for your sins, you're not ready. You're not prepared to die. You're not prepared for the judgment. You're not prepared for eternity. You've got your water. You're prepared for the storm to come. Storm Eon, Hurricane Eon. But you're not prepared for eternity. You're not prepared for the judgment of God. My friend, I plead with you. I urge you to wake up. Judgment is coming. Judgment is coming. If you're not in Jesus Christ, you're in danger. In danger of hell. You're in danger of the wrath of God. Oh, my friend, without Jesus Christ, there is no hope. Without the Lord Jesus Christ, there is no hope. Jesus Christ already paid the, the sin debt in full. Jesus Christ already finished the work. Hallelujah. He said, it is finished. The Lord Jesus Christ said, It is finished! He paid the dead in full. He paid for the sins of the world. And because He's done, He's made a sacrifice. Because He made the atonement. Because He shed His blood and paid for the sins of the whole world. Salvation is freely available to all. To all men. Salvation is freely available. To all men. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews. Chapter number 2. That Christ tasted death. For every man. He tasted your death. And my death. And in his resurrection. His resurrection was proof that His payment was efficacious. That the Father, that God the Father accepted the payment, accepted His sacrifice on the cross. And through the, the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, He conquered death. He has the keys of hell, of death and hell. And He is victorious. He is victorious over the grave. He is victorious over sin, death, and hell. And because of His victory, because of His finished work, we also could have the victory through Him. 
We also can be overcomers through Him. That's right, my friend. We also can be overcomers through Jesus Christ. Through the, the, through the precious Son of God. Through the precious Son of God. My friend, repent. Repent and believe the gospel. For it is written in the scripture, for in times past in, the, in men's ignorance God winked at, but now he commandeth all men everywhere to repent. But now commandeth all men everywhere to repent. For he hath appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness by that man whom he hath foreordained. And that man is Jesus Christ. Because Jesus Christ is going to be the one that judges the world. The Lord Jesus Christ will be the one that judges the world in righteousness. Jesus Christ in His Word will judge the world in severity, in righteousness, in truth, in uprightness. Yes, my friend. And that day is coming. That day is coming. You may not think it's coming, but it's coming, friend. It's coming. Judgment is coming, my friend. If you're not in Jesus Christ, friend, you're in trouble. You're in danger of hell. You're in trouble with God. God's wrath, God's anger abides upon you if you do not believe on the Son. If you reject Jesus Christ, God's anger, God's wrath abides upon you right now. You're under the wrath of God. And you're headed for the eternal storm of His wrath in the lake of fire. If you don't get saved, my friend, if you don't believe upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you will end up in hell, sadly. God does not want that to be your future. God does not want that for you. That's why He sent His Son, His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, into the world so that you would believe upon Him, so that you would receive His salvation, and therefore not... Be condemned! But the Bible says, the Word of God, the King James Bible says, He that believeth not on Him, He is condemned already. He that believeth not is condemned already. I cannot condemn you. The Bible says you're already in a state of condemnation. If you are an unbeliever, if you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, my friend, the Bible is very clear about your condition. The Bible is very clear about men who reject Calvary, who reject the, the payment that was made by Jesus Christ, on the cross of Calvary. The Bible make, makes it very clear about those who will reject the free offer, the free gift of salvation. Oh, how sad it is for a, a soul to die lost. How sad it is for a sinner to die as an unbeliever, to die in their unconverted disposition how sad would it be for you friend to die without Christ to die lost dead in your sins dead in your sins and trespasses how sad would it be friend, for you to end up in a place called hell that you do not have to go to a place that you do not have to go to a place that you could have had escaped for free by simply accepting the payment that the Lord Jesus Christ made on your behalf, that He made for your sins on the cross, that that was all you had to do, was simply accept the, the payment, the payment that Jesus Christ made, to accept the free gift, the free offer, the free gift of salvation. That's all you had to do. 
But you rejected it time and time again. You rejected the free gift of salvation. And then you wind up in hell. You wind up in a burning hell where you have no business being in. If you go to hell, friend, let me tell you something, you'll be an intruder. You'll be an intruder there. That hell is not meant for you, friend. The place of hell, the place called hell, was not meant for you. The very place in the boat that the King James Bible calls hell, that place was not intended for you, friend. But you will go there if you reject Jesus Christ. You will go there if you reject the free gift of salvation. When you die without Christ, when you die lost, when you die dead in Adam, when you perish and die in Adam, your place will be in hell. Among the murderers and the serial killers, among the rapists, Among the ruthless killers of all ages. Your place will be with devils. And with Satan himself. The devil and the false prophet. They too will have their place in the lake. Which burneth with fire and with brimstone. And if you die. If you die in your lost condition. That will be your place. Hell will be your place for all eternity. The lake of fire will be your place, my friend, for all eternity. If you die lost, if you die without Jesus Christ, that will be your place. That will be your eternal home, my friend. So I plead with you, I plead with you today, please prepare, prepare for the coming storm of God's wrath. Please do not die without Jesus Christ, my friend. Please do not put this issue, issue off. Do not procrastinate when it comes to your salvation, friend. Your soul is very important. Your soul matters to God. Please do not die without Jesus Christ, my friend. Prepare for judgment. Prepare for the coming storm of God's anger, of God's holy wrath. The Bible says that the wicked, the wicked shall be turned into hell and all the nations that forget God. My friend, if you're not in Christ, if you have not accepted the free gift of salvation by faith alone, my friend, you are still you are still a law sinner. You are still among the wicked. That's your disposition. That is your natural disposition before a holy God. God cannot accept you into heaven if you're standing upon your own self-righteousness. He cannot do it, friend. You must be clothed in Christ's righteousness. You must receive the imputed righteousness of our Lord Jesus Christ. That's the only way you'll make it to heaven. That's the only way that God the Father will accept you, friend. He must see His Son in you. You must have the Son. The Bible, the King James Bible says, He that hath the Son hath life, and he that hath not the Son of God hath not life. But God's wrath abides upon you now. Oh, friend, may you repent. May you repent. Change your mind about who you are. And change your mind about who Jesus Christ is. May you believe the gospel. May you believe the gospel which was delivered unto me. The very gospel that was delivered unto Paul. And that he delivered unto the churches. How that Christ Jesus died for our sins according to the scriptures and that he was buried and that on the third day Jesus Christ rose again three days later 17 
72 hours later, three days later, he rose again according to the scriptures. And because he has risen, I, I can live. I can live not in fear. I can live in victory. I can live in power. Resurrection power. All because my Savior, my Lord, he lives. He lives. He lives. Hallelujah. As I begin to conclude my message out here today, I'm glad for those of you who are prepared for the storm. I'm glad for those of you who have prepared for Hurricane Eon. That's great. Again, I'm all for preparation. It's why it's very wise to prepare. To get, to get prepared for the coming storms. It's a very wise thing to prepare yourselves, prepare your homes for the coming storm, for the coming hurricane. But I want to warn you, friend, if you're not in Jesus Christ, you are not prepared for what's to come after you die. If you're not in Jesus Christ, my friend, sadly, you're not prepared for death. You're not prepared for the day you're going to die. You're not prepared for the judgment. And that's the storm you need to prepare for. You really need to prepare for the storm of God's wrath. You need to prepare for coming judgment. You need to prepare for the day that you will stand before God and have to give an account of your life and have to give an account for your works. That is the judgment, my friend, that you need to prepare for. And if you're not in Christ, the judgment you, which you will stand at will be the great white throne judgment. The very judgment that you will stand before will be the great white throne judgment if you're not in Christ. And if you're in Christ, if you are a Christian, if you have trusted in Jesus Christ to save you, if you have received salvation from the Lord Jesus Christ by believing upon Him, then your judgment will be at the judgment seat of Christ. And even though, and if you are a Christian, I'm glad, if you are saved, if you do know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, well, I certainly am glad about that. But you better still prepare, though. Because the born-again Christian is also going to have to stand before God in judgment. His judgment will be a bit different, but nevertheless, we still need to prepare ourselves for the judgment seat of Christ. Because there we will have to give an account for our works done in the body, whether they be good or bad. Whether the works we did in our body, in our service unto God, whether they be good or bad, they will be brought into account. All the works done in the body. So even the, even the child of God, even the born-again Christian, had, needs to prepare for judgment. The born-again Christian needs to prepare for the judgment seat of Christ, because it's at that judgment that he will either receive reward, or he will suffer loss of reward. And that's going to be a sobering judgment, my friend. But those of you that are not saved, those of you who have not believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, friend, what are you waiting for? What are you waiting for, friend? I urge you to come to Christ. I plead with you to believe upon the Lord Jesus Christ and trust in Him alone to save you. Trust in Jesus Christ alone for your salvation. Stop trusting in your works. Stop trusting in your own good deeds. Stop trusting in your self-righteousness. Nothing else can save you. Only the Lord Jesus Christ can redeem your soul. Only He can save you, friend. May you repent. May you repent and believe the gospel today. Once again, do not put it off. Do not put, do not procrastinate. If you're hearing the gospel, if the Holy Spirit is working in your heart, if the Holy Spirit is reproving you of sin because you believe not in Christ, my friend, do not put it off. Do not procrastinate. Do not procrastinate. You might 
This might be your last chance of hearing the gospel message. This might be your last chance of hearing the preaching of the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Please do not delay it. Do not procrastinate when it comes to your soul, when it comes to your salvation. Please do not procrastinate. Some of you might die tonight. Some of you might not make it home tonight. There's no telling what can happen just within the next hour. There's no telling what can happen just within the next 24 hours of time. None of us are prepared. None of us are guaranteed for tomorrow. None of us are guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not even guaranteed tomorrow. I'm not even guaranteed tomorrow. And I'm a saved, I'm a saved man. I'm a born-again Christian. But I, even I could die tonight. I might not make it home tonight. I don't know. There's no telling what can happen. And I know, friend, that this world is getting worse and worse. I know there's a lot of discouragement. There's a lot of despair. There's a lot of people that they're, they're crying out. They're trying to find a way of escape. They feel like they have no hope. A lot of people, they, they turn to suicide. They end up taking their own lives. Because they can't take it anymore. They cannot bear, they cannot bear up under the pressure anymore of life. Of life's struggles. Of life's challenges. They simply cannot bear up anymore under life's challenges and struggles. And so they end up giving up on life. And they end up taking their own life. They turn to suicide. Oh, how sad. How sad, friend. My friend, I got good news for you. You can have hope. You can have hope. Hope is found in a name, and that name is Jesus Christ. Hope is found in a name, and His name is Jesus Christ. You can have hope. If you'll come to Jesus Christ, if you'll receive Him by faith, you can have hope. You can have victory. You can have eternal salvation. You can have forgiveness and mercy. You can receive the free gift of salvation. You don't have to continue in your doubts and your confusion and your depression and your worries. And... You don't have to continue with carrying your burden anymore. You don't have to continue carrying your burden anymore. Some of you, you live with so much guilt and shame. And that's another thing I think that's pressing upon a lot of people. They have so much guilt. They have so much shame. They have so much unforgiveness. Some of you have done so many bad things in your past. Things you that should not even be spoken of. And you, you just, you're so ashamed. You're so filled with grief. How sad is it, my friend, when you just cannot see that God has been stretching out His hand unto you this whole time. God has had His arms of mercy extended towards you. And yet you will not receive His free gift. You will not receive His love. You will not receive His Son as your personal Savior. You will not receive Jesus Christ, although He invites you to take of His water, to take of the water of life freely. He invites you to take of the free gift, to receive of the free gift of salvation. And yet you don't, you, you do not respond by faith. You will not accept it. That's sad, my friend. It's really sad. I pray you repent. I pray you believe on the, on the gospel message. I pray that you would accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Accept Him as your personal Savior. So that way, that way you can become a child of God. That way you can become a child of the kingdom. 
the kingdom of God. That way you can have a place in heaven, a home in heaven. God is not, God does not want to condemn you. God does not want to. God does not want to cast you out. But he will have to, friend, if you do not accept his free gift of salvation. There's no other way of salvation except by Jesus Christ. You either go to heaven by accepting the, accepting the payment that Jesus Christ made on the cross for your sins, or you're not going to heaven at all, friend. You're either going to go to heaven by God's grace, by believing on His Son, Jesus Christ, or you're not going to heaven at all, friend. If you have, Please be warned, you are on your way to hell. You are on your way to hell, sadly. You're in danger. You're in trouble with God. And Jesus Christ is ready to receive you unto Himself. But you have to make your choice. You have to choose to accept Him by faith. You have to choose to accept Jesus Christ by faith and by faith alone. God is not going to force you to receive salvation. You have a free will, friend. God created you with a free will. He is not going to force you to accept His Son, Jesus Christ. If you want to, if you want to reject Jesus Christ, my friend, God will allow you to reject Jesus Christ. And then you'll die, and then you'll end up in hell. A place of eternal judgment. A place of eternal damnation. Repent, folks. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. Believe on the wonderful name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. May you trust Christ today. Amen.